What is up, mermaids, and welcome back to my IGTV channel. What it do? How are you? So for those of you that peeped my trailer that I posted on Thursday, you would know that I'm starting a new series for the spooky season. And that series is called Serial Killer Saturdays. <laughs> Basically what the series will be about is I will be doing my makeup while talking about certain serial killers. Now, this is not an original concept. I was inspired. I'm taking inspiration from a certain person who's done something like this already. And she has a series over on her YouTube channel. And I'm pretty sure some of my crew trying, my pff, crew trying, true crime lovers already know who I'm talking about. For those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, I am talking about Miss Bailey Sarian. I'm putting, pointing to her little YouTube channel right here. So basically what she does is she is a makeup artist, YouTuber, influencer, whatever you want to call her. But she has a bomb series over on her YouTube channel called Murder, Mystery, and Makeup Monday. She also has a cool theme song. You want to know what it is? Go over to her channel because I'm not going to sing it because I'm not getting copyrighted. Well, basically what she does is she talks about all different types of true crime stories. And while she talks about them, she does her makeup. And I found out about her like a good couple of months ago and I've been addicted to her channel and I keep that bell notification on and I'm over on her channel with the quickness on Mondays. And I was immediately attracted to her channel because... I've always loved things about true crime and mysteries, hence why I majored in criminal justice. And then, I mean, it's Halloween, it's spooky season. So I'm going to basically be doing the same thing, talking about talking about the criminal and doing my makeup. But the difference between what I'm doing, what she normally does is, is I'm only going to be specifically talking about serial killers. And hopefully y'all enjoy this series so that way I can do it again each year for the spooky seasons because I want this to be volume one part one this episode volume one part one so basically what I'm going to be doing is mainly just talking about serial killers and so for this like I said for this volume this volume is mainly going to be about female serial killers and what I'll do is I'm basically going to be doing like I said the same thing as Bailey doing my makeup and talking about the serial killers and it's going to go up every Saturday for the entire month of October so if y'all ready and if you like true crime, go ahead, go grab your makeup brushes if you want to follow along with me, do your makeup, or go grab a snack and let's get ready to talk about a serial killer. Well, our first female serial killer that we will be discussing is a woman by the name of Juana Barasa, also known as Mata Vejitas. All of my Spanish speaking people, if I butchered that, I'm so sorry, but that is Translation in English, she was the little old lady killer. So our good or not so good sis, Juana Barraza, AKA the little old lady killer. Her crime span took place from approximately 1998 through 2006. Juana was born in the rural Northern part of Mexico City, Hidalgo on December 27th, 1957. Her parents were Trinidad Barasa and Justa San Pierre, Sam, Sam Pierio. Again, I apologize for butchering these names. Her life wasn't exactly the best and it's kind of sad and funny in a way because her parents, her father Trinidad was a police officer and her mother was an alcoholic prostitute. And her, yeah, her life, like most serial killers, was not exactly the happiest. It was not exactly the best. Um, and with her mom being an alcoholic prostitute. And it got worse as time progressed. But let's go ahead and start from the beginning. So mom, three months after... Juana was born, decided to pick up and leave Juana's father and go be in a relationship and get married to her stepfather. 
No, not Juana's stepfather. Who's the stepfather? So Juana's grand stepfather. Juana never really learned to read as a child and she barely spoke into her infancy and her and her mom didn't really have the best relationship and it never got any better. And honestly, I don't blame her because, pardon my language, her mom was shit. At the age of 12, Juana's mother decided, she decided to pimp out her daughter to some random man for three beers. Yeah, you heard that right. She pimped her daughter out for tres caronas, three beers. Mother of the year award. Mother of the year. She pimped Juana out for three beers at the age of 12. And the man would go on to sexually abuse her for four years, for the four years straight and get her pregnant twice. Once at the age of 13 and another time at the age of 16. And both pregnancies resulted in miscarriages. After Barasa's mother died of cirrhosis, shocker, she packed up and moved to Mexico City where she married multiple times. She got married several times and all of her marriages failed miserably. And she ended up having four kids, but unfortunately... Her eldest son ended up dying in a gang-related incident at only the age of 24. In the 80s and 90s, Juana had several different jobs and toured as a masked wrestler by the name of La Dama El Silencio, or the Lady of Silence. She chose that name because it matched her own shy and quiet personality. In 1995, she became low on cash after the birth of her fourth son, and this resulted in her stealing from sh stealing from shops. And later on in her life, her small petty thefts would escalate to burglaries. And of course, since we're the reason we're here. Murder! In 1996, she and a friend that we're just going to call Tapia, she and Tapia decided to hatch a plan to start burglarizing and stealing from the homes of the elderly. Their plan was to dress up as nurses, and then once they entered the homes of the elderly people, from gaining their trust, they would steal from them. But what Barasa did not know is that Tapia was actually a low down dirty snake. And I'm saying this because Tapia was hatching a plan with her federal police officer boyfriend, and we're just gonna call him Flores. Flores, the corrupt federal police officer, and his, his lovely lady, um, Tapia, decided that they were going to extort Juana. Flores ended up catching um, Juana after one of her burglaries and made her pay him 12,000 pesos in exchange for him not arresting her. Her situation became much more dire after she decided, after she quit wrestling in 2000, where she made about 300 to 500 pesos a match. Now, on to the fun stuff. The murders. Quick little side note. There's a lot of information that goes into this murder. And I'm not going to go too in-depth, like, with, like, all of the outside information about the case like Bailey does, I'm mainly just going to like talk about the serial killer and like what they did and like all that other type of stuff. So if you want to know a lot more about Juana Barasa, I will be sure to link something somewhere or 
if you want links to stuff, just DM me and ask. On November 25th, 2002, Barasa claimed her first murder victim. 64-year-old Maria de la Luz Gonzalez Anaya. Like all of the other burglaries that she committed, um, Juana dressed up as a nurse and gained entry into Maria's home. Once inside the home, Brasa claimed that Maria made some derogatory comments, which set her off. Barasa basically snapped and she beat Maria, then strangled her with her bare hands. <sighs> poor thing. Mm -mm. After the murder of poor Maria, <sighs> Barasa didn't kill anybody else for another three months. So, I mean, I guess that's good, but... If only she had just stopped, but if she had stopped, we wouldn't be here, so. Barasa mainly approached her victims either on the street or by knocking on their door. She dressed up either as a nurse and told them that they were that she was basically a civil political nurse or that she was a social worker. Her disguises at first initially consisted of like just white clothes so that way she could trick the people into like looking like a nurse since the nurses typically wore like they typically wore white so she would originally at first she would just wear white clothes and that's how she would trick them at first but then she was able to actually gain access to an actual nurse's uniform sometimes depending on the wealth of her elderly victims she would gain access by telling them that she was offering the massages or that she would be able to provide access to like certain medicines. Once she gained access to their home, if her victims were distracted, she would strangle them initially. But if not, she would beat them first. This woman's sick. And she wouldn't just beat them she actually used the moves that she learned from her wrestling career to beat them and to strangle them especially when she would strangle them with her bare hands and even though she carried like medical tools with her along with her disguise the most of the time she would strangle her victims using items found in their home so like ligature like she would use like anything as a ligature that was like found in their home and that's what she would use to strangle them she would also leave the items that she had in the home that she found in the home to strangle them with she would leave that at the crime scene and after she killed the victim she would rob them mostly for her own gain but then there were times where she would rob them and keep things as trophies because most of you who like enjoy true crime and stuff like that about especially about serial killers you know that most of the time the killer will keep something as a trophy to remember to remind them of the crime as i mentioned in the beginning her crimes lasted from 1998 to 2006 but her string of murders didn't start until 2002 and those lasted until 2006. Her first victim was on November 25th, 2002 and her last victim was January 25th, 2006. A poor 84, 84 year old woman who she strangled with a stethoscope. This lady was nothing nice and I feel, I feel so bad for all of the victims' families. Like these, all of these people were like in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Like those are the people she targeted. Like she targeted like all of these poor elder, like these poor, poor elderly women. Oh my God, I can't. That woman was just, that woman was wild. But also I had a total of 40 victims that she killed. So she had a total of 41 victims. 40 victims that she killed and only one that she just robbed. 
So Mexico City was having a lot of issues with murders at the time and it was becoming a big problem. When all of these murders were happening, especially with the elderly women that were ending up being killed, they thought they didn't know it was a woman that was doing it. Of course, they thought it was a man that was committing all these murders, but hmm, jokes on you, it was a woman. Of course, they were going to think it was a man because most of the time, whenever there's like a serial killer on the loose with like all these people dying, especially when it's like women and such, they're going to think that it's a man. So when they dubbed the killer the little old lady killer, they used L in front of it. So, so it was originally pronounced El Mata Vejitas because of course they thought that it was a male serial killer, but jokes on them, was a lady. And there was like a huge wave and a huge spring of like brutal murders of elderly women in Mexico City. It started in 1998, so it's becoming a real issue, and they needed it to stop, like, now. All right, I'm going to quickly do the rest of my eyes, throw on some lashes and some mascara, and do my under eyes and stuff off camera, and then we'll be back to finish the rest of the face and wrap up this case. All right, so we're back on to how this crazy chick got caught. So apparently they used two profilers to try and identify the killer because a lot of sources were saying that it was a man dressed as a woman or just a very like stocky burly woman about five six five seven in height. The physical profiler was taking information from the people that said that it was a woman saying it was a man even at one point they said there was a transvestite so that's what the physical um profiler was doing and then the psych they had a psychological profiler come in and talked about a woman who had brown hair and all this other stuff hi editing leah here so i forgot to mention that um the profiler was able to make a bust that had all of the details, of uh, the physical details of Juana Barraza. So yeah, just going to go ahead and throw that in there right there. Editing Aaliyah out. Like I said before, her reign of terror ended January 25th of 2006. It's actually... It's funny, but not funny at the same time. How she was actually caught was she was witnessed fleeing from the last home of her final victim. So it's it, it really sucks for the last victim, but if she hadn't been caught fleeing from that victim's home, she probably wouldn't have been stopped. So it's not... It's not a win-win situation at all. So don't think that I'm trying to say that. It's like, I'm happy that she was caught fleeing from the victim's home and that's how she was caught. But I wish that she had been caught like sooner. But I feel like we all feel that way about when killers don't get caught immediately. When she was brought on to trial, a lot of people were shocked to see that it was a woman because from previous murder scenes, they said that they were looking for a masculine woman. And so a lot of police officers were looking for a transvestite. So that was interesting for the witnesses to see that it's just a really, really masculine, strong looking lady. Police said that a fingerprint from Barasa linked her to 10 of the 40 murders that she committed and on trial in spring of 2008 she confessed to one of the killings 
and said that her motive for one of the murders was the lingering resentment that she had for her mother. I think that that's wild that all of the resentment that she had for her mother built up and that's what led to all of those poor innocent other ladies dying but I mean when you think back to it it's like you can kind of see why and I mean there are numbers of cases where serial killers have killed people due to the fact that they have had lingering resentment towards a certain person so on March 31st 2008 Barasa was convicted of 16 counts of murder and burglary and also charged for 11 separate counts of murder and was sentenced to 759 years in prison. Apparently in Mexico, since years and terms are served concurrently, the maximum amount was 60 years, but I mean, she's still going to have to serve that full term. So she's still currently serving her 60 year term in jail right now so yeah and that concludes the story of Juana Barasa aka the little old lady killer yeah she was a nice lady so yeah guys tell me what you think down below in the comments about this lady like you don't ever want to like obviously you don't ever want to feel bad for the serial killer because they're serial killer but my good sis well my not so good sis her mom was her mom was shit and that led to her motive like sucks because I feel like if she hadn't had all that bottled up resentment from her mother she probably wouldn't have killed um she probably would have still just committed burglaries, but I don't think she would have killed. Like, you tell me what you think down below. I personally think that if her mom hadn't done to her what she did to her, like pimping her out for beers, I don't think she would have murdered anybody. But that's my opinion. You tell me what you think down below. All right, guys. So that wraps it up for episode one of Serial Killer Saturdays. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like this post. Comment down below. Comment down below what you thought of this video, what you thought of Juana Barasa. And also let me know down below what female serial killer do you want me to talk about next time? Do you want me to talk about somebody that's famous, somebody that's well known, somebody that's not so well known? Because I don't think Juana Barasa is very well known, unlike, you know, Eileen Warnos. But yeah, let me know down below who you'd like me to discuss. But until then. I'll see you next Saturday. Stay safe. Stay spooky. Bye. <laughs>